The RTX 4080 Super has hit store shelves recently, and the outlook I've seen for this card has been a mixed bag. With the Super branding, consumers can easily be led into believing this card offers a substantial upgrade over the original model. But at $1000, if you're in need of a high-end GPU for a build, or are looking for an upgrade from a previous Gen 1, then the RTX 4080 Super doesn't make much sense to buy. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel, and I hope you've all been doing well. The last of the RTX 40 Super Series hit store shelves earlier this week. The reception I've seen pertaining to this graphics card has been somewhat of a mixed bag with mostly disappointment. The bad news is that when it came to benchmarks, the performance at best is around 2-3%. Now, this should not have come as a shocker or surprise to anyone. We've known the specs of these cards for around 3-4 to four months since the leak started to surface, and at the very beginning, I had said the only card from the the lineup that is offering somewhat of a considerable increase in performance is the RTX 4070 Super. With the RTX 4080 Super having the least increase because when you look at the specifications, it's a fully unlocked 8103 die that results in 4 more SMs or 5% more shaders, so in a perfect scaling scenario, 5% at best is the performance uplift you're looking at, something like 3D Mark would show that, but most games don't scale linearly like that, hence you're seeing about 2-3% on average. Apart from that, everything else remains the same there's no change to the memory configuration, nothing. Usually when it comes to new hardware releases, I'm also urging you guys to look at as many reviews as possible to take into account different games, settings, methodologies, etc. But in this case, this average FPS chart from Tech Power Up basically sums up everything you need to know, which is essentially this is an overclocked RTX 4080. That's it. So performance wise, if you have a 4080 and a 4080 Super side by side, it's virtually an identical experience. Based on that, there really is nothing super about this card aside from its new naming. I even saw some YouTube video reviews where some people jumped straight to the average FPS figures chart and didn't bother going through separate games and that makes sense, no point in wasting time looking at figures we saw a year ago. The main highlight, and I guess this is a positive for some people, is now a little over a year later you can get RTX 4080 performance for around $200 cheaper. This would explain why Nvidia didn't bother making the RTX 4070 Ti Super more faster than they did, because if they did then and it would have cannibalized any opportunity for this graphics card. If the RTX 4070 Ti Super was, say, 95% of the 4080, then everyone would have said that, you know, save the $200, get the former instead, and if you do need the extra performance, you can also close that gap through overclocking. I briefly had talked about this on my last video, but when the RTX 4070 Ti Super came out and we were looking at benchmarks, there were a number of people who said, screw it, I'm just gonna wait for the 4080 Super and get that, since that's the performance I was after something that's close to 45% better than the RTX 3080. I'm already at $800, what's another $200 at this point? And this is where the reception for some people was positive, but I guess you could say that Nvidia had this planned all along, and they love to play mind games with the consumer like this. The original 4080 when it came out was in a bad spot, but that was done on purpose so that the customers were upsold to the 4090, and even from a performance standpoint and a hardware standpoint, it made sense. You got more VRAM, a wider memory bus, more cache, and the large 8102 die. And if you wanted to delve into things like path tracing or even professional productivity apps, maybe you foresaw the AI craze, then you would have needed all the performance you can get. Now, at $1,000 US, I've seen people say they're okay with the price, but it's what we probably should have gotten a year ago, though I'd say even $899 would be more appropriate, but margins people. On the other hand, I've seen people say that no, even at $1,000 this card is just too expensive, and they're not happy with the fact that this is now going to solidify the 80 class at $1,000 going forward. Price Prices on wafers are not getting cheaper, and TSMC's next generation 3 nanometers could be significantly more expensive for Nvidia to utilize depending on when they're releasing Blackwell. You also got inflation to take into account as well, though that's starting to settle down in most developed countries. However, if Nvidia is gradually shrinking the die size for the lower tier parts apart from the flagship, then you do have to take that into consideration. Just look at the specs of the 3080, it's a much larger die at 628mm square, wider memory bus, the 2080 was also a pretty large GPU, and then you have the 4080 at 379 millimeters square. I mean, it's also impressive at the same time that Nvidia was able to extract this much performance from a die that's 40% smaller. Had Nvidia followed the same tradition when it came to hardware, where you were getting a cut down 80102 die or something very large, 
then you would have gotten an 80 class GPU into Ada Lovelace lineup offering 60% plus better performance. So this is where I can see people are becoming disappointed, prices are going up as expected, but you're also not getting the same level of hardware you used to either. In other words, it's basically shrinkflation. Given this trend we're seeing, the next iteration of 80 class might be $1100, come with a 300mm square die, it might have the same sort of memory config, or it may look a little bit nicer because it might come with 20 gigabytes of VRAM, but on a 160-bit bus. But circling back to whether you should buy this card or not, honestly it really just comes down to your own personal preference and what your situation is like now. The general consensus I'm seeing is that many believe you're better off waiting for the 50 series which could release by the end of the year. However, we don't really have much to go on if that's going to be the case, except for just looking at traditional re release cycles and we also just don't know how much it's going to cost. And given that there's also rumors going around that they're pushing back the release, maybe because they're waiting for wafer costs to come down or there just is something inherently wrong with the node, then you're going to be left waiting for a while. What I also think is going to happen is that these cards like the 4080 Super and 4090, so the high-end ADA cards are going to be holding their value for quite a while. The reason why I believe this is going to happen is NVIDIA may kick off the 50 series with an ultra high-end option, something like a Titan again, and then the RTX 5090 starting at $2,000. And if that release happens at Q1 2025, then we probably won't see the 5080 and 5070 until Q2. By the way, this is just speculation on my end, could very well be off but I'm just throwing some possibilities out there. If that turns out to be the case, then buying a 4080 Super right now doesn't necessarily seem like the wrong choice. And with technology, you gotta remember, there's always something around the corner. Worst case scenario, you can, you know, sell it, recoup some of the cost, and then get the new thing if you really want to do that. The other thing I can see happening is that if Nvidia will be pushing Blackwell and they feel like they need marketing to get something going again, then I can see them very well releasing a 4090 Ti or the RTX 4080 Ti. I'm personally leaning towards the latter, a cut down 8102, that slots in at that price point the original 4080 sold at $1,200. And if you think that's dumb because it'll be too close to the 50 series, well, the RTX 3090 Ti, a card from recent memory, released just six months prior to the 4090's announcement. And like I said, if Nvidia decides to just roll out $2,000 plus GPUs and then doesn't say anything about the 80 or 70 class, then these ADA cards will be selling for a while. We've seen Nvidia's official slides state stuff like that where they're actively promoting last gen stuff alongside the new gen stuff, saying that hey, if you can't afford it, then there's still last-gen stuff for you to buy. As for AMD and their Radeon Technologies group, I'm not entirely sure what they're going to do, but I think they're probably just going to drop the price of the 7900 XTX to $900 and then just call it a day. You might see further rebates from retailers or AIBs, but given their behavior in the market, I think they're just content with their situation and are just coasting by. They generally just don't seem like they're interested in growing their market share in that segment and know that the people who want AMD will still just buy their card regardless and they're content with just selling to those people. To be fair though, there are some advantages if they do do that, like you'll save $100 if, and if you don't care about the ray tracing stuff and the Nvidia software features, this would be a better option for you. But if they were serious, then you would have seen a response from them a while ago, like a month before the release of the RTX 40 Super Series, you'd have seen some aggressive price cuts across the board. All in all, the RTX 4080 Super is just a slightly overclocked 4080. There is really nothing super about it, but that was to be expected at this point. But hey, if you're in the market for a high-end GPU, you don't want to pay the 4090 prices that are currently ongoing in the market, but you still want the Nvidia experience, then the 4080 Super is as good as it's going to get for a while now. At the very least, it's $200 cheaper than the original model, so it has that going for it. Whether or not you find it worth it now is up to you to decide. As for now, that'll do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next Next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.